For most of medieval Europe, timber wasn't just a building material. It was life itself. Homes, bridges, barns, wheels, weapons, tools, everything depended on wood. But they had a problem that would terrify any modern carpenter. Insects, moisture, fungal rot, and constant exposure to the elements. A beam could decay in as little as a decade if left untreated. Yet somehow medieval craftsmen developed a way to make timber survive for generations. Many of the great halls, stave churches, and timber-framed houses that still stand today owe their survival to a coating so effective it functioned almost like armour. It resisted rot, repelled water, strengthened the wood fibres, and even acted as a natural insect deterrent. This wasn't magic, and it wasn't preservation luck. It was a formula created through practical experience and, well, centuries of trial. By the end of this guide, you'll know exactly how that medieval woodcoat worked, why it lasted so long, and honestly, how to recreate its principles today for your own woodworking, homestead projects, or even heritage-style construction. The medieval woodcoat originated from necessity and experimentation rather than theory. Access to high-quality timber varied widely, and, you know, losing wood to rot meant losing labour, resources, and sometimes entire structures. Medieval craftsmen, lacking industrial chemicals, experimented with what they had. Tar from pine resin animal fats, vegetable oils, soot, beeswax, and mineral pigments. Over time, they realized that certain combinations protected wood far longer than others. One of the most effective mixtures was a blend of pine tar, linseed oil, and sometimes charcoal or iron oxide. This coating seeped deep into the wood grain and created a hydrophobic barrier that repelled water while still allowing the wood to breathe. That breathability was the secret. Modern sealants lock moisture in. Medieval sealants let moisture escape. Anyone today working with natural timber can replicate this principle simply by combining natural oil with a soft, heat-thinned resin, such as pine tar or rosin, then brushing it warm onto lumber. The formula worked because each ingredient played a precise functional role. Pine tar provided waterproofing and insect resistance. Linseed oil delivered penetration and flexibility. Charcoal or iron oxide added colour while giving UV protection long before anyone knew what ultraviolet degradation was. The resulting coat darkened the timber dramatically, but more importantly, it stabilised it. Timber treated this way absorbed far less moisture during rain and released moisture slowly during dry periods, preventing the expansion and contraction cycles that split beams and weakened joints. So, to apply this in a modern context, you uh, heat pine tar gently until it becomes fluid, then mix in boiled or raw linseed oil, and, well, you can add powdered charcoal if you want that classic medieval finish. While still warm, the mixture can be brushed onto wood in long strokes. It actually penetrates deeper than cold oil finishes, strengthening fibres from within, you see. 
The technique preserved everything from stave churches to ship hulls because, you know, it adapted to harsh climates. Northern Europe's climate punished wood relentlessly. Long winters, constant dampness and cycles of freeze and thaw turned untreated timber into mush within just a few years. Yet stave churches in Norway, coated repeatedly in pine tar, are still standing after 800 years. Timber homes in Germany use linseed oil-based coatings to survive centuries of rain and wind. Even Viking ships receive versions of this treatment to increase their life at sea. This wasn't accidental. Medieval builders learned that maintenance mattered. A structure wasn't coated once and forgotten. It was re-coated every few years. Each application bonded with the previous layer, creating depth rather than build-up. If you're treating a shed fence outdoor table or cabin today, applying a natural oil tar mixture every two to four years creates the same cumulative longevity. You know, the wood coat really succeeded because, well, it aged with the timber instead of fighting against it. Modern synthetic coatings, on the other hand, often peel because they form a hard shell around the wood. When wood expands or contracts, the shell just breaks, right? But medieval mixtures didn't do that. The oil component kept the coating flexible and the tar provided a sort of semi-solid consistency that, you know, moved with the wood. Even in extreme cold, the layer never became brittle. It actually remained bonded to the cellular structure, preserving it from the inside, you see. So, the practical takeaway here is really quite straightforward. If you're working with outdoor wood, you should choose finishes that remain flexible. A natural oil tar blend is, well, ideal because it never flakes. And when you need to renew it, you just add another coat. There's no sanding or stripping necessary. The method is actually easy to reproduce today with just a few steps. Right, so heat a small pot of pine tar until it becomes smooth and pourable. Then add linseed oil and stir until the mixture is uniform. A common ratio used historically is equal parts oil and tar though, you know, many craftsmen preferred slightly more oil for easier penetration. Once warm, brush the mixture onto the wood in slow, deliberate layers. Let the first coat soak in fully before applying the second. The wood will darken dramatically, but that change signals long-term protection. For a quick test, treat a small scrap board. Leave it outside for a month next to untreated wood. The difference in moisture retention and colour stability will make the value of this medieval trick instantly clear. If you enjoyed exploring this forgotten medieval technique and want more practical history-backed knowledge you can actually use, make sure to subscribe to In the Beginning. Share this video with other craftsmen, survivalists and history lovers who appreciate old world solutions that still outperform many modern products. There's much more to uncover and your support helps bring these forgotten skills back to life.